Hello and welcome back to the channel. This weekend sees Chelsea travel to Wembley to play Manchester City in an FA Cup semi-final. Yes, that's right. Chelsea, in what is one of their worst seasons ever, make another trip to Wembley in the hopes of making that trip to Wembley again for the final. But standing in our way is Manchester City. Now, this season... We've played Manchester City twice. The first game at Stamford Bridge was 4 all, and the return fixture up at the Etihad was one all. So both teams have failed to beat each other. Chelsea are coming off the back of a week's rest, whereas Manchester City, as we all know, have just played 120 minutes and a penalty shootout in a gruesome Champions League quarterfinal against Real Madrid. However, in the last eight meetings, Manchester City are unbeaten against Chelsea. Chelsea have failed to beat Manchester City since that glorious night in Porto. But before we get into the preview, I need you to drop a like on the video and make sure to subscribe because we're on the road to 2,500 subscribers. Let's get back into the preview. Pochettino versus Guardiola. Guardiola's got Pochettino's number. He's only ever lost to him three or four times. He's obviously drawn to him twice this season, but... Look, Manchester City are a different animal when they're this close to winning trophies. And I, I just think this is going to be a difficult game for Chelsea. We've obviously got a lot of goals, but we've got one person in particular that I believe could be Manchester City's kryptonite. And that is Cole Palmer. The boy they let slide from the grasp, the clutches of their grip to Chelsea for £40 million because... They deemed him inadequate to their squad. He never wanted to leave. They were the ones that said, you're not going on loan. You need to leave or stay in the squad. He knew he was good enough to play. So off he went to Chelsea for a reasonable fee. And the rest, as they say, is history. Well, look, it's only one season, but we're already talking about 20 Premier League goals. It is time for Cole Palmer to remind those Manchester City fans what could have been. Now, on the other side, Phil Foden. He's finally stepping in to what we all thought Phil Foden would be. He's filling those shoes. He is looking like one of, if not the best English talent in the world right now. It's arguably a battle of the boys in blue between the boy who is Cole Palmer and the boy who is Phil Foden. I see the winner becoming a man. It's honestly... So exciting to see how good English talent is and the fact that two huge teams like this can match up together and the battle between Phil Foden and Cole Palmer literally means a final awaits. It's very, very exciting. We just know how good Manchester City are. And look, they might not have beaten Real Madrid, but they absolutely dominated that game. They, they played Real Madrid off the park. And if you're looking at Real Madrid as a Chelsea fan, you might be thinking that is the way we need to go and set up. Well, let me tell you something. I don't think if we set up exactly like Real Madrid, we win this game. We actually showed ourselves already how to beat this Manchester City team. And that was the first 70 minutes away at the Etihad. That's the correct way to play. The, the drop back too far actually invites a lot of City pressure on. If you're sitting in a really low block, you invite City on and it's just almost inevitable that they score. Whereas what we need to be doing against Manchester City is almost being sat in a mid-block, a little bit higher up, so that if they do break that, they're not too close to goal. Haaland is a different entity, albeit he missed a couple of really big chances in that game at the Etihad, but he's not been on the form we expect of him, even if he has scored 20 goals, which is absolutely fantastic. But he, don't forget, this guy is in a Manchester City side that are phenomenal. So he should be scoring 20 goals, right? Last season is when he's excelled to get up to like 50. But this season, 20, that seems about right for any striker playing for Manchester City. So we need to make sure we contain him. We need to make sure that we're not sitting too deep so that Manchester City can apply a lot of pressure to us and obviously inevitably make Chelsea concede. It's going to be a tough, tough job for us not to concede tomorrow. Put it that way. It's going to be difficult. Everyone who's watching will know that. However, when we've played against Manchester City this season, the way we've transitioned and the speed and the fluidity with which we've done that with means that I actually think we could 
we could have a chance against Manchester City tomorrow. And yes, it's a slim one. Believe me, it's a real slim chance. But I see it. If we do what we did well in both the games against Manchester City, which was fight, which was move the ball quickly from attack to defence, from defence to attack, sorry, transition really well, do it with fluidity, do it with clear ideas of who is going to be open and in what areas. Remember that game at the Etihad? Well, we clocked, didn't we, straight away that Nathan Aki was going to be a bit of a liability and in behind him, Jackson kept running. And how many times did we see Jackson get in behind on the ball to potentially either square or open up a shooting opportunity for himself? We saw Raheem Sterling be really effective. He scored in both fixtures against Manchester City this season. A guy who's also played for Manchester City that probably never wanted to leave. Well, look, maybe this is his chance. And yeah, he's out of the team, but don't forget about the wingers that are keeping him out at the moment. They're not exactly setting the world on fire. They're not setting the world alight. So let's see what happens with that because there's there's omens here. There's history just sort of repeating itself or players fighting to prove a point like Raheem Sterling, like Cole Palmer. They're players that want to show why they should never have been allowed to leave Manchester City, it almost seems. If you look at what they've done in the previous two games against them this season. So it'll be exciting. If Chelsea set up in the right way, I genuinely think there is a chance for us. Like I said, it's a slim one, but I think it's there. I'm concerned about our goalkeeper situation. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm slightly worried that Sanchez might be in goal. Because the last two FA Cup ties we've had, Sanchez has played. And let's be real, Sanchez really hasn't been good enough. If we're being honest here, Sanchez hasn't been good enough in a Chelsea shirt. And even when he's played in the last couple of games... He's caused us problems. He really, really has. Think about Leicester. Sanchez was an issue in that game. So I'm concerned that Pochettino would want to be loyal to him. For me, in a game like this at Wembley, you play Petrovic. And there's no questions asked. I don't even think Sanchez can ask the question. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. That could be the reason Chelsea have have a chance or not, to be honest with you, is if, if he's playing, if Sanchez is playing, we know there's issues. We know he can't play out from the back very well at all. The issue with him, though, is he believes he can. And that's what causes the breakdown. He keeps trying things that just aren't acceptable, especially against sides like Manchester City, because they press so well, they do it so quickly after they lose possession, and players like him do not react fast enough. We've seen that. How many times does Sanchez think he's got way more time than what he actually does? So hopefully we don't take the risk tomorrow. We don't attempt to play out from the back against one of the best sides off the ball in the Premier League. And then we may have a chance that potentially when we get the ball off of Manchester City on their inevitable attacks, we can counter-attack and do it really quickly. And we can also trust that the goalkeeper behind us isn't going to break down play, isn't going to try something silly, isn't going to try something that ultimately could cost us the fixture, cost us the game. Look, we were nervous when we went to Wembley before. You can't tell me that Dezassi, Gusto, that right-hand side to start with looked so shaky. They were kicking the ball out of play. They didn't know what to do. Well, now they've been there. They know what it feels like. Some of them have played 120 minutes. Some of them have even taken penalties. At Wembley. Oh, no, we haven't. You can't tell me now that they don't know what it's like. I don't have excuses anymore. This Chelsea team shouldn't be nervous going into tomorrow's game. And all, if anything, they should be fitter. They should be sharper. Manchester City, the majority of their squad played a lot of minutes. Haaland obviously come off at 90 and there's rumours that there's a slight injury there. But I don't believe that. I just genuinely think Pep knows what he's got coming around the corner. And probably didn't feel that Haaland was having too much of an impact on that game. It's going to be a real tight battle. We know exactly what to expect from Manchester City. They will absolutely dominate the ball. They will have between 5 to 10 chances. They had nearly 20 corners against Real Madrid. They will absolutely want to win this game. And they don't come out sheepish after a loss. They come out fighting. So Chelsea have it all to do. But for me, there's no reason why Chelsea shouldn't be doing the same. Because... If anyone can trouble or worry Manchester City this season, I believe it's this Chelsea side. 
for some reason, they don't like something about it. And like I said already, Cole Palmer is definitely something to do with that. He, he's got their number, if anyone. And maybe so does Raheem Sterling. So for me, look, like I said, I want to see Petrovic in goal. I want to see a back four of what we've seen recently. If it's Thiago Silva and Trevor Chalaba, I don't mind that. If it's Gusto and it's Kukurea, I don't mind that either. Midfield, look, Conor Gallagher and Casado work really well. And they had something that Enzo doesn't have, and that's legs. They were able to get around the pitch far easier and far, far more efficiently than what Enzo can. They then knew that they could give the ball to the smarter, more creative players in Cole Palmer, in Madrid, in Madueke, right? Even in Jackson, his link-up play was exceptional. And you know what? If those four started, I wouldn't be that annoyed. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the return of Raheem Sterling tomorrow. Just because I feel like there's something extra in it for him. Being at Wembley, don't forget, this is where Raheem grew up. This is his backyard. He loves playing at Wembley. Think about what he's done for England. Think about what he's done for Manchester City there in the past. Raheem Sterling loves Wembley. And, and he loves playing against Manchester City. And if he was to play instead of Mudrick tomorrow, I wouldn't mind that. And look, I know people aren't happy with Sterling. A lot of Chelsea fans don't have a lot of time for him. But I remember what he's done at certain points. And I also remember the career that he's had. And I still believe there's a player in him. And you can't argue with his performances against Manchester City this season. So why not? If Sterling ret returns to that side in that front three of potentially Palmer, Madueke, Sterling, I'd take that. You know who I feel a little bit sorry though, for, sorry for though, is Carney Chukwemeka. I feel like this guy's been really good recently. And if he's not in the team, he should be one of the first substitutes to make it onto that pitch. Because the way he transitions as well, he does it so seamlessly so elegantly he absolutely just cruises through the middle of the park but he does it with speed and he does it with a physicality where he can hold players off I see a young Ruben Loftus cheek in this player and I genuinely know how effective that can be and I, I believe that he should be getting minutes somewhere and obviously Jackson will probably start up front and look he messed up with the penalty stuff so did Madueke but I'm willing to move on from that. Yeah, I was annoyed at the time. Because I don't think there's a place for that attitude. But I'm kind of trusting in Pochettino to do the right thing here. I think he's probably realised not choosing a penalty taker was the wrong thing to do. And that these young players, they need leadership. But sometimes it's easy for us fans to see that. But sometimes as a manager, you've actually got to see that happen in front of your eyes to go, oh yeah, I messed up on that. Look, we did really well against Everton. Pochettino got a lot of stuff right. Pochettino's got a lot of stuff right against Manchester City this season. The only thing he really did do, which I didn't like, was when he dropped, he kind of lost his nerve a little bit. And he kind of brought on Trevor Chalabo with about 20 minutes to go and dropped us a little bit deeper in that game at the Etihad. And ultimately, City scored. And we ended up going away with a draw when we should have won. And I was really disappointed with his substitutions. Well, hopefully he's learnt from that. And you know what? Whatever he did for Everton, where he got his message across, do the same. Honestly, I'm intrigued. I'm excited to see what happens tomorrow. And I do believe if Chelsea make sure they do the things well against Manchester City that they have done in the previous two fixtures, we've got a chance here. We do. And that extra game in Europe... That might be something that makes it more difficult for Manchester City. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on the lineup? What do you want to see? I can't wait for it. A day out at Wembley. If you're there, come and say hello. And I will catch you after the game. Fingers crossed, we'll be going to Wembley again. I'll see you in a bit.